Welcome back everybody. Please like and subscribe to this video. It really helps out the channel. The Grandfather Paradox. The Grandfather Paradox goes as follows. If you were able to travel back in time, and you went back in time and killed your own grandfather before you were born, or really, before your father was born, then you would cease to exist, as if your grandfather was dead. You couldn't be born and couldn't travel back in time to kill your own grandfather. This paradox is set up to say either time travel to the past cannot happen, or that it would somehow be impossible to kill your own grandfather, if time travel was possible. So let's first establish that time travel is possible, and we know of it, experience it, and have even have astronauts that experience it more than us. It is traveling into the future, of course. According to the theory of relativity, the faster you go, the more mass you accumulate, and while time seems to pass normal for you, for those that aren't traveling at your velocity, time would speed up from your, from your perspective. When you stop traveling, you would be in your relative place in a future far from when you started your trip. Using this understanding of the universe and its dual nature, one has to conclude that it's possible in one direction, it must be possible in the other direction. Einstein's theory does support the ability to travel back in time. We weren't sure how this happens, of course, but some suggest wormholes as the best guess on how we might physically be able to do this. But there are others. Obviously we've seen this in books and movies, and creating a time machine and even the con conceptual time machine has issues. This might be a bit of a rabbit hole, so strap yourself in. As a fan of time, time travel myself, I, I even did my first graphic novel on time travel. I've always frustrated when I've seen it portrayed on film and, and books as often as it does. Even some scientists don't bring up the point that I'm going to make very often when they discuss it. Eh, usually they're discussing just the mechanics of how it could work. But in its practical usage, this is the largest point against traveling back in time, and also proving that there isn't really a grandfather's par grandfather paradox. This factor is our location in space, and how fast we move through it. If you had a time machine in, say, your living room and you activated it today and decided to step into it, you'd be leaving the point of where you were in space. And what I mean about that is, even if the Earth wasn't hurtling itself through space at blistering speed, the Earth itself spins on its axis. So let's start with the near then the far. When you stepped into the machine, the earth didn't stop spinning. And it would have been spinning at the time you're, you were heading to, so you have no idea, really. If you could somehow magically stay locked to the planet as it moves through space, so let's say you could, well, you'd end up in some random point in the earth's spin. You'd still be on the same latitude and longitude, but the point where you stepped out could be anywhere along those lines on the globe. Since the Earth is mostly water, the odds of you stepping into the middle of an ocean and drowning is highly likely. If not that, then perhaps you exit the time machine into a wall, or in front of a car, or any other myriad of things. The point is that you wouldn't end up in the same place you left, and it's very likely you'd be dead shortly after arriving. Now, of course, the Earth does move, so even that scenario is moot if you walked through a time machine, you would exit into space and die instantly. The end. Okay, that doesn't ruin the whole travel back in time scenario completely, because you could have a ship and travel to where the Earth was. This becomes complicated though, because you'd need a pretty fast ship. Even if you went back a week, it'd take you a while to catch up to the Earth. And you wouldn't benefit from any orbital assist. Not only would you need to know the solar system's trajectory through space, and how far along you were to that in order to plot your course, you'd, ha you'd then need to be able to plot the Earth's rotation around the sun. These are simply much too complicated for any real sense of travel, especially when we still use rocket engines. If we had anti-gravity tech and could zip faster, faster than light, it's a bit more doable. So as you can see, the grandfather paradox seems pretty irrelevant when you start thinking about real time travel. I know I'm being a bit of a buzzkill, I don't like it either, because I love the idea of traveling back in time, experience the day in life of people in, say, ancient Rome or even back in New York in the 40s. It's just an amazing concept that I would love. We'll come back to this idea in a little bit. 
I think real time travel is a little bit like above and possibly might explain our reality. For now, let's bypass all that and say we found a way to travel back in time to anywhere on Earth and at any time we want. And you do go back and you do kill your own grandfather. Would it be possible? Well, of course it would be possible, and it wouldn't collapse the universe, nor would it split off into another timeline. The timeline split doesn't hold up to the logic of the grandfather theory any more than the single timeline. If you splintered off into another timeline, you'd be a person non grata. You didn't come from that timeline, and you still shouldn't exist there. I also don't concur that multiple timelines theory necessarily. I think we could save this discussion for another video in the future, but... Some of the things I touch on here will allude to what I could mean by that. Well, let's do a thought experiment and see if we feel the same way about this paradox as we currently do. Let's say we send a wolf back in time and the wolf ends up killing its own grandfather. In this scenario, do we agree that it's the same paradox? Or do we assume that this really shouldn't break anything? I'm very curious as to your real answers, your, both your logical answer and your gut feeling answer. I think sometimes they can be different. It would of course have no difference on the rest of the world, this, would this implode the universe? But do we think such catastrophic paradoxes are only for humans? And if so, why is that? Is the answer an issue we have that this really is a paradox for and only for consciousness? See, if we change it to the wolf, we can easily say that the first wolf goes back in time is the grandson wolf. But in the future, it isn't the grandson, it is a different wolf. It could loop like this ad infinitum if reality was played out in loops. See, the wolf doesn't change the motivations. It was something else's motivations to travel back in time. Namely, whoever sent the wolf. So in the future, the same entity would still send a wolf. There should be no difference in the situation with a human. The only case would be if the inventor both arrived on time travel all on his own, shared none of his ideas, and then built a time machine, stepped through it, and then self-destructed it after, and then he killed his own grandfather. That unlikely and pretty much impossible situation would not nor could not happen in reality. No one would be able to do this all on their own. There would be collaborations along the way, breakthroughs that would lead someone else to eventually discover time travel, and you'd have a situation where the device would have been built by someone else. Consciousness, of course, is where we get into trouble. Because the consciousness couldn't survive the grandfather's paradox. And this is, I think, the reason we think about this concept so much. The erasure of our own consciousness through our own actions. In reality, I believe the concept of this paradox is little more than a morality tale that one would write in holy books. It's not a situation that breaks time. It is only a situation that snuffs out consciousness from someone's own doing. And not only theirs, but their father's and their entire line down from this person. If you were able to do this, you wouldn't change the event of someone going back in time and killing someone, but you would change the consciousness that did this. We all want to be soothed to know that if our consciousness was wiped out, that the fabric of space and time would unravel and the universe would be destroyed. That's a bit egocentric, in my opinion. Again, all of this is impossible in any way with our current tech, as I laid out before, but what is more likely and was more possible as a descendant simula simulation. A simulation that our descendants would be able to step into a recreation of our world or any other time in history and live through us, experiencing our lives. Very possible that this is what reality is. Now I'll save the simulation theory for another video, but haven't you ever felt that there's some voice nudging you or sometimes telling you or judging you? that be one of our descendants somehow in our bodies sharing our consciousness? Just a thought. In that situation, you could have your infinite worlds possibility where your descendants play with your life and get you into all sorts of different scenarios by influencing you this way or that way because it's either fun or they want to learn what would happen. Like what would happen if someone went back in time and killed their own grandfather? Don't assume our descendants won't be as curious as us, if not more so. There can be no paradox when we don't fundamentally understand the entirety of existence. If we can't even say that we're in base reality or a simulation, you can have no paradoxes. All things are possible and at the same time, nothing is possible as none of this is real. 
The only paradox there is, is in your mind. Well, that's it for this video. I want to thank you, everybody, and please, again, share this video, like and subscribe, and uh, I'll be happy to see you in the next one.